All right, your space pod for Thursday. We've got Jared on. You were spreading rumors. Yeah, I was. And uh, you ended up being right. Yeah. You yeah. know what's really nice? Hmm. Being correct about things. <laughs> you know what's even better? Spreading rumors and still being correct about it. So, hey, that's pretty good, right? So uh, a couple of weeks ago on the show, we did a space pod about rumors coming from the Laser Interferometry Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO and Virgo, possibly detecting two neutron stars colliding with each other. Well, guess what? The confirmation came. Yep, they, we actually detected the gravitational wave from them. And uh, <laughs> the gravitational wave was detected on August 17th by LIGO in Hanford, Washington and Livingston, Louisiana. They have two detectors at LIGO. And it was also detected by the Virgo gravitational wave detector in Europe. Now, it was determined that we were detecting the final seconds of two neutron stars orbiting around each other just before they collided. Those neutron stars... They're the cores of stars that went supernova, but didn't have enough mass to create a black hole. And these neutron stars, they're roughly the size of a city, just about 16 to 20 kilometers across. And if you pulled a teaspoon's worth of material out of a neutron star, it would weigh more than Mount Everest. So this, <laughs> this right here is a great, uh, a great use of the data by Georgia Tech, uh, showing you the neutron stars colliding and the gravitational waves on the right side right there as they come out uh, of the neutron stars. Now, what was so cool about about this gravitational wave detection is that the previous ones, as you see in this here uh, from the University of Oregon, uh, were seconds long. They didn't actually last all that long. They were momentary blips uh, in time, if you will. Uh, but this gravitational wave detection of the two neutron stars colliding, it lasted for nearly 60 seconds. This was a very long chirp involved uh, with these gravitational waves. Now, these two neutron stars that collided, they had different masses. One was 1.6 times the mass of our sun. The other was 1.1 times the mass of our sun. They were approximately 130 million light years away in the galaxy NGC 4883. And uh, if we listen close enough to the video uh, that we have right here, we should be able to hear a quick chirp from it. Any Building second, up. it is. There you go. <laughs> that was the chirp uh, that we got from it. So a very interesting one. Now, unlike the previous observations of gravitational waves, the passing of these was highlighted by the detection of gamma rays from the European Space Agency's Fermi Space Telescope and only mere seconds after the gravitational waves were detected. So someone in the comments on our rumor space pod actually asked if gravitational waves travel at the speed of light. And this detection of light two seconds after the gravitational wave tells us that they do travel at the speed of light arriving first. This is, yes again, another proof that Einstein's theory of general relativity is correct. So with LIGO and Virgo's gravitational wave detection and Fermi's gamma ray detection, scientists actually narrowed down the location almost immediately where this gravitational wave occurred. And within several hours, we had over 70 ground-based telescopes and seven space-based telescope, uh, telescopes aimed and observing NGC 4883. And this right here is the actual data uh, from the Hubble Space Telescope that we saw in visible light. Now, the amount of data that we gathered on the single event is immense, and we're literally going to be working with this, this data for the next few years. But one of the most surprising initial findings in the data isn't just that we can now capture optical counterparts or actual witnessing of the event that caused the gravitational wave. It's, it, it isn't that we finally seen two neutron stars colliding directly in an event that we call a kilonova, uh, which we've, we've seen before back in 2013. Uh, what astounded us is that we saw the generation of heavy elements that we find here in the universe. This is not a cherry on top for the observation. This is like if you ordered a regular hot fudge sundae and you got like six massive banana splits to come with it as well. Uh, it's not that we didn't understand the mechanisms that generate heavy elements in our universe. It's just that we've never really seen the process which is called nucleosynthesis occur directly for our instrumentation. Most of the time that occurs in the core of a star or the dead remnants of a supernova. We've never actually seen the initial event that kicks that off. And in fact, this event 
these two neutron stars colliding made 16,000 times the mass of the Earth in heavy elements, including gold and platinum to the tune of 10 times the mass of the Earth. So now we have an, now we have an answer to this. Two neutron stars colliding do generate heavy elements. This is something that was predicted in studies that were released about five years ago, and now we have the confirmation that our studies were correct. So. An incredible amount of data was, was gotten, not just with gravitational waves, not just with optical counterparts, but also with the formation of the heavy elements that we see in the universe. So fascinating that we got all of this out of one event happening. So the live chat room has some comments. Sure. So Green Jim uh, says, you need a bloody strong teaspoon then. If you're going to pull it out <laughs> yeah. with the weight of Mount Everest on it, yeah. uh, that would be uh, this less of a question, more of a comment. Uh, but from YouTube, uh, what, you get a black hole if two heavy enough neutron stars collided. Actually, yes, you should be able to. Uh, but those neutron stars need to have masses in double digits that of our sun. Um, so yeah, you actually could get a black hole if two neutron stars collided with each other. Um, and also, if you have a star that's about eight times uh, more massive than the sun, it's going to end up making a black hole. So, uh, so a neutron star is basically a, a star that was not massive enough to make a black hole, but still massive enough to make a supernova. And that's basically the leftovers from the supernova. So awesome. So there were two very high mass stars that had supernovas, uh, and the, the dead cores of those stars eventually found their ways to each other and gravitationally spiraled in on each other and collided, and that's what we saw. I'm also very sad that this shot is ever so slightly too tight that you can't see your shoes. Lift your feet up. Your shoes are amazing. <laughs> You've got, like, the universe on your shoes. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a lifestyle when you <laughs> decide to do, do astronomy. So, Thank you, Jared. Yeah, uh, that was absolutely fantastic. If you <laughs> like these uh, space pods as well as our live shows, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit all of the buttons on YouTube now. You need to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. It all really helps us. Every subscriber helps. Tell your family. Tell your friends. Get people watching the show. That would help us a great deal. And this last week on Orbit 1039, we talked to Jan John Amabile about how we can colonize the solar system in our lifetime. So check that out. Uh, it's really, really cool.